Well, hello there. Um, thank you for joining me with this uh, little path on Pi game, Asteroids game project that I'm going to put together for you. And uh, hopefully we are able to build this project in not too much amount of time. And um, I hope you have a lot of fun with me. Um, the link to the GitHub will be included in the video um, details and description in the bottom. Um, as you can see, I'll be working with the main.py file. There'll be an assets folder, and in that assets folder, there'll be the, the, the images that we'll be using, the, the rocket ship, the background, um, the asteroids, the various asteroids in this video, in this tutorial series, we'll be animating the asteroids, so we won't just be rotating them, we'll be, we'll be rotating through these various images um, for each, and there'll be a random amounts of asteroids on the screen with random images for them. Um, starting with the large size, you'll have the medium sizes, and then you'll also have the small sizes. Right, also we've got two or three sound files. If we go to sounds, you'll see it's just three basic sound files. The laser for when the spaceship shoots, and then the explosion sounds for large or small explosions. Great, let's get started, shall we? Let's go for it. Let's close this. So when we go into our main, our main uh, PyCharm file um, on the main.py, let's start off with our imports. I will be importing sys and os. Um, it's just a habit that I have. I'll be importing the PyGame module. Um, for later on, we're going <coughs> to for later on we're going to make use of a specific thing in PyGame called the vector two function. So let's just go ahead and import that now. So long. Compile game, import vector 2. And lastly, much later on, we're going to make use of the random module. Um, but it's always good to go ahead and put it in now because, yeah, we'll be using the random for random location generation for the, the asteroids themselves. So let's just get the modules out the way from the beginning. Let's start there. So straightforward, the very first thing we normally do when we start off our program is that we pygame.init to initialize the pygame module. Right, I'm going to go ahead and spread out our main part file um, in the various little sections that I make use of. So over here I'm going to have a comment for utility functions. Then I'm going to have a comment that I'm going to put in that's for all our utility functions, and we can go in and we're going to put in a comment for comment for all of our uh, uh, game objects that we will be creating. Game objects themselves. Um, let's go ahead and look down further. The next thing I'll be putting in for is my game settings variables. Game settings variables. Um, this is all obviously just to organize and sort my code, so I know which sections I'm looking for. Um, this will be uh, game display window initialization. Obviously, that's where I start off the Pi game window. Set the screen with game. Uh, oh, listen to me, I'm rambling. Pi game display window initialization. Um, the next section will then be my Pi game loading of the game assets section. That's where I plan to put everything together. Uh, the next thing we will have will be our, I have a little section called for once off functions, um, loading game objects, etc. Okay, and then the next little section I have is game object lists. And then the last thing I'll have is my main game loop. Main game loop. Okay, I've gone ahead and spaced these things out unnecessarily at the moment. Let's just rather keep it all together for now um, so we don't lose track of where we are while we're working along. Okay, my main game loop will be below that one. 
Right, so obviously now we've initialized, we've got our per game initialization section, and we need to go to our per game display window initialization. So the thing that normally goes through there is, um, we'll go ahead with our game screen, per game dot display dot init. No, excuse me, set mode, and we obviously want the screen width and screen size, screen width, and screen height. Obviously, we haven't created those variables yet, so let's go to our game settings variable section, and let's add those variables. In. Screen width, we're going to go with uh, 1280, and screen height, we're going to go with 960. Okay, so now we've got our game screen, we've got it set in, it's going to start up with the, the screen width and screen height of 1280 by 960. Uh, let's go to the next section, we're going to go with game dot display dot set caption. Um, we're going to call it asteroids. Asteroids. Right, so that's our game window, game screen, set caption. Uh, the next thing we're going to go ahead with is let's start our main game loop. So here by our main game loop, we're going to go down and we're going to say run game is equal to true. And then while run game is while run game. All right. So we're going to start off our while loop, our main game loop. Um, now we're going to quickly create a event handling loop, just so that we'll be able to switch off the game. Check for quit and for escape key presses. Alright, that's what we're going to put in there. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to go with for event in par game dot event dot get if event dot type is equal to par game dot quit or no not or not here if it's equal to par game dot quit well then straightforward run game will then be equal to false okay and once program is equal to false, we would then go down to here because the, the while loop would then end, and then we would have to then program dot quit, and then sys dot exit. Okay, so if I had to run this now, we should get a game screen, a game window that pops up, and. We have a game window that pops up, but I have forgotten something. Mm. Not part game display screen has been set up. It's there. Uh, no, obviously no background yet because we haven't loaded any backgrounds. Let's just run it one more time. Asteroids is there, but we've shown the little part game icon. I'd like to change that. Um, and of course, there's no background, there's no screen running in the back, there's no background screen. Uh, we just have a blank image. But that's cool. Okay, well, the thing we wrote here is for event handling loop, check for quit and or escape key presses. Okay, so what we want to do is if we hit the escape button, we want it also to quit. So let's go with uh, if event.type is equal to par game dot um, key down. And then if event dot key is equal to par game dot k underscore escape. And then if that is the case, then we'll be run game is equal to false. Okay, let's just quickly test that out. We put that in, we'll run the par game module. Um, uh, if we hit that button, we already know that it will close. If I hit the escape key, we exit the program. Okay, good job, that's working. Right, 
what we said is we wanted to quickly change the uh, background, the icon image. We wanted to go ahead and change the icon image. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to create a utility function for loading images. The reason why I'm going to create a utility function to load images is because we're going to be loading a lot of images later on. And it's just going to save us a lot of time to be able to just call that function instead of having to uh, individually load each and every image that we have. As you can see here, once we get to loading all these images, it's going to it's actually quite a few images to load. We definitely do not want to do that manually for each one. Right. So in order to do that, I just need to find the spot. Okay, over here by my game images icons, I'm going to create a variable called icon image, right? That's going to be equal to, uh, now we want to load in there the image for the rocket ship, because I want the rocket ship to be my little icon. So I think in order to do that, let's go to the utility function, let's create that utility function for loading images. Let's do it now quickly. Uh, so it's going to be define game image load. Um, and then I'm going to pass to it the image file path. Image file path. And I'm also going to pass to it the size that we require. Um, and that will be because of the various asteroid sizes large, medium, and small. Also, because we want to transform the image once we've loaded it. Right. I'm just going to put in a little comment here. Uh, function to load all of the game images and converting the image sizes when necessary. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add image is equal to pygame dot dot image dot pygame dot image dot load, and it'll be the image file path. Right. The next thing we're going to do is we're then going to transform that image pygame dot image dot trans again dot transform uh, dot scale and that would be on the image itself and then we're going to go with the size that we want to transform it with now it's going to be the size is actually a, a listing or a tuple if we put it through if we feed it through because we want to obviously we want a size being x and y okay then we're going to return that image. All right. So now we've got our utility function created. Game image load. Go down here to my icon image. I'm going to call that function. I'm going to call it on my image file path, which will be my rocket ship here, which is in my assets folder. So I'll enter the string assets. Rocket ship dot PNG. Right, and then the size is going to be the size of the Pi game icon images is 20 by 20. So we're going to feed in 20 by 20. All right. Once we've done that, we will then further transform that image, icon image, will then be equal to um, pygame.transform 
dot uh, rotate the image and the surface will be like an image and we're going to transform it uh, minus 90. That will turn the image onto the right hand side. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to update the Pygain window screen. Pygain.display.set icon and the surface will be the icon image. All right. So what we should see now, I'm just going to double check that, that assets folder, rocket ship, assets folder, rocket ship.png, we should see our icon in the top of the screen. If we take a look right over there, you can see our rocket ship is, on, is facing the right hand side and uh, we've no longer had the little Python Pi game symbol. It's now the icon for our game. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Moving on. Right, the next thing we want to do is we want to then load in a background image for our game. Because at the moment, every time we run the, 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 run the program, we just have a blank background screen. And that does not help us at all. So let's go ahead and uh, load in our background image first. So, we're going to go under our little section we have created here for loading in image assets. We're going to go ahead and uh, call our image loading function. Okay, so we're going to create our background image equal to uh, game image load. And we want to load in that's space.png. So it's going to be uh, assets space.png. And the size is going to be, we want it to be the size of our screen. So let's just go ahead and call it that. Right, use those two variables straight right up ahead. Screen, oh my word, screen height. Okay, that's our background image, game image load, assets space, dot screen, dot. okay. So that would load our image into the game memory. However, we're still not calling it onto our game, onto our main game loop. We're also not calling our pygame.display.update function. That's what I was missing earlier. We must never forget to put that in. So I'm going to go back up to the top under my utility functions. I'm going to create a function specifically for updating my game screen window. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. I'm going to say define game window updating function. All right. So the first thing we're going to load, the very first image is going to be my background screen because everything that gets drawn onto the game gets drawn on top of this. So my background image, I'm going to call it onto my game screen, dot blit, bging, and its coordinates is going to be zero, zero for the top right, top left corner. Okay. Then the other thing I need to do while I'm in this function is I need to go ahead Call my pygame dot display dot update. Okay. Right. That's my pygame dot display dot update. Let's just update the comments for this function quickly so we don't forget what we're using it for. Handling the game screen updating. Right. So if we scroll down to our main game loop. What I want to do is put it here at the very bottom of our main game loop. I want to go in there. And I just want to call, go ahead and call game window updating. And if we hit the play button, we should get our background image reflected. And there we go. We now have, we are now in space, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the final frontier. 
Right. So now we've done that. Um, we have a background image. We have our game window on the go. I just want to add one more variable to my game settings while we are busy with it uh, because it's a very small item, but uh, I tend to forget about it later on. So I just want to go ahead and add a clock to our Pi game. Pi game dot time dot clock. All right. And then in our actual, just below our game window updating function, I just want to call in that little clock dot tick and restrict our game FPS to 60 frames per second. Right, if we hit the play button again, we have not broken our game. Right, the very first thing I think we want to do is we want to add our rocket ship to the game. Let's go ahead and add the rocket ship to the game. In order to do that, I think we're going to create a player class. So let's go ahead and create that player class. So under our game objects, right over there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call class player. And of course, when we construct an object, we've got to bring in our Dunder init method self um, and we're going to create it when we create the object we're going to create it with some coordinates where we want that object to appear on the screen first thing that's going to happen we're going to go with self dot image is equal to um, well we want it to be image equal to a player image of course, we haven't loaded in the player image yet, so that means we have to do that. We've already created our function. Let's go down to our game running assets, and we want to load in player image to be equal to game image load. And the image file part will be assets uh, rocket rocket png and the size will be what size will it be it will be 50 by 50 okay so now our player self dot image we have a player image so our player class will have an image once we've created that image Next thing we'll need is we'll need to get the rectangle from that image. So we'll go self dot image, image rect is equal to self dot image dot get rect. So that basically means that we'll be getting a rectangle from the image loaded. Okay, once we have self dot x and self dot y will be equal to the coordinates that we will be feeding into the player class when we create it. Uh, the next thing we will need is self.width. And self.width is equal to self.image.getWidth. And then self.height is equal to self.image.getHeight. Right. Now we have that self dot image dot image rect dot x will be equal to self. Okay. So what we have now is we've created our player image, and we've create we've drawn in a we've created a rectangle surrounding that player image. Okay. Then these two attributes. Basically, it's just getting the width of that image and it's just getting the height of that image. It's just information we're going to use later on. Uh, the next thing we're going to do now is what's happened now is that we've created a rectangle um, based at the center of the image. So what we need to do now is we actually need to move that rectangle to the top left corner of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to self dot image dot image rect dot x will be equal to self dot x minus 
self dot width because we've got the width of the image divided by two. So it's basically like we're dividing that image in half and we're subtracting that from our x. That just moves the image to the left a bit, the, the rectangle to the left. Because the image and the rectangle are not sitting on the exact same spots at the moment. So we do the same for the image rect dot y is equal to self dot y minus self dot height divided by two. Right. Lastly, what we need is we need to put in the self dot pause, create the self dot pause, last few items we do. And this is where we're going to bring into the vector2 uh, function. Now, the vector is basically a grid coordinate system that Pygame makes use of the vector2 coordinate system. And it's a very useful function, very useful module in Pygame um, that handles a lot of trigonometry and a lot of those kind of things that I did not pay attention a lot of attention to at school. And I'm very grateful that somebody out there very clever went ahead and really did this stuff. So self dot image rect dot x and self dot image rect dot y. So that will be the position of my rectangle. And then self dot direction is equal to vector zero minus one. That means that the direction of my player character will be, when it starts off, will be facing upwards. And uh, my self dot velocity is equal to vector two. As a default variable, it'll just be basically zero, zero. And then self dot rotation speed, which is the speed at which my player characters will be rotating whenever I turn the left or right buttons. That speed will be object rotation speed. I see I created it as a variable um, so that it would not be fixed. So let me just go up to my game settings and variable. We'll go down to my game settings and variables. Uh, right over there. And I called it ob no, object rotation speed. Two, three, and while I'm here, object speed is equal to zero point two five. All right. Now that we've done that, let's go back up quickly to my player class initiate me method. Here I have my object rotation speed, and the last attribute I want to create is the self dot speed is equal to object. So there we go, we basically have, we have the initialization, the init method of our player character. Um, now we need to go ahead and create a few methods for it. Um, I think the first method we should create is the draw method, draw to screen. So, def draw self, and I'm going to pass it a surface argument. Okay, and let's just put in the comments that we had here. What is that right there? I put in, this accepts the rotation rotation angle of the image and the latest object coordinates then puts the image to the screen. Cool. So, because we are handling with um, the rotating system of the, because we are rotating the image, because, you know, asteroids, the, the, the ship doesn't just fly up, down, left, right. I mean, it can fly in diagonal angles as well. And in order to handle that, um, there's quite a few little lines that Pygame and uh, Transform make use of. So, it's, it, it's fairly complicated to try and explain, but basically, um, the image gets rotated, and if the image rotates, um, every time that image rotates, it, it's, it starts back from the position of zero, and then it rotates to an angle of five. And we'll go back to zero and rotate to an angle of six. And we'll go back to zero and rotate to an angle of seven. It does that so that the, the image does not lose its integrity. 
Um, if it had to rotate from position 5 to position 6 to position 7, the image would degrade and eventually it becomes such so, so, so degraded that you wouldn't be able to make out the image anymore. So, in order to get that done, and from a couple of things that I've looked on online, um, in order to get this sorted, we're going to go with the following lines of code. Under the draw method, the first thing we're going to put in, we're going to put in our angle, a variable called angle, which is going to be in our self dot direction, which we have in our int method, dot angle two. If you remember at the top, we wrote there our self dot direction was basically facing upwards, zero one. Then our angle two, so here we are, our angle, we're resetting our direction to vector zero minus one. So as I mentioned, each time we rotate the image, we rotate it back to position zero. And then once we've taken it from position zero, we then begin to rotate it. Rotated image will be equal to pygame.transform dot roto zoom self dot image the angle to 1.0. So we're taking our image from z angle 0 and 1. Right. So our rotated image size is now equal to vector 2 rotated image dot get Size. Right. Now we're going to create our blip position onto the screen where we're going to actually put the image onto the screen. Because now that's obviously changed to what, from what it was when we loaded the image originally. So our blip pose will be equal to our self dot pose minus our rotated image size multiplied by 0 0.5 or divided by 2. Now the reason why we do that is otherwise the rotated image would rotate on its X and Y top left corner. It would rotate around that instead of rotating in the middle of the image, which is what we want. We need it to rotate around the middle of the object. But once we've added that line, we will then go on to our window dot blit rotated image Split position. Yeah. So if we go ahead and all right, we are not calling this anywhere. So we need to go back up to our game window first. We need to load in our game asset. What's our phone? Loading game objects. There. Let's call our player character. Player. Let's just make sure I'm in the right place. player is equal to our player class and in the coordinates we're going to call it in on our screen width because we want them in the middle of the page screen height so there we call our player we create our player class but what we don't do is we're not we're still not drawing them onto the screen so we go into our game window once we get to our game window, we then want to call it so updated game window. Uh, there. And then we want to uh, draw the player character on the screen. And the player dot draw. So if I run this now, the draw function, if I remember correctly, we have to pass it a argument, which draw it onto the game screen. If we run it now, we should get our player character in the middle of the screen. And there we go. There we are. Obviously, there is no functionality. The object is just sitting there in the middle of the screen, and it's not doing anything.
So the next thing we want to then add to that is some functionality to our game character. So we need to add um, some methods to our, to our uh, player class. So let's go to our player class and add some methods. Uh, okay, what are we going to go with first? Okay, so let's start off with our rotation method. So we go with uh, uh, let's start off with our accelerate accelerate method. So when we've put in the accelerate motion method, this is basically whenever we push the up button, we want to increase the speed of the player object. So in order to do that, we can take our self dot velocity. We're going to update our self dot velocity by our self dot direction, multiplied by the self dot speed. Okay. Next thing we're going to add one of the next method we're going to add to our functionality here will be our diff rotation uh, function to handle the rotation of the spaceship. Oh, so I'm going to rotation is equal to one. Again, okay, our rotation function is going to accept the input for rotating the object, rotating the object. Great, so once we're in there, we're going to go with, uh, we're going to take our, we'll create our angle variable, and we'll take our self.rotation speed multiplied by rotation. That will now be our new angle. Once we've done that, we'll take our self dot direction dot rotate IP and then angle. All right. Okay. The next function we need to add will be our move function. Diff move. The whole point of this method, not function, but the whole point of this method will be to update the position of the player object. So in order to update the position of the player object, we'll go with self.pos is equal to self dot velocity. So the next thing we want to do is we also want to update the rectangle. If we go down here to our draw method, I just want to add this in quickly. Pygame dot draw dot rect so on the window. Uh, we'll make it 255, 255, 255, self dot image rect dot x, self dot image rect dot y, self dot width, and then self dot height one. I just want to draw a rectangle around our image character. So if you see now, there's a white character. You see that the square is not set around the rocket ship, but it's more on the top. It's not set incorrectly because the image of the player character has been set at that X and Y location on the top left of the rectangle. We need to change the position of the rectangle so that it encompasses the, 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 the image of the rocket ship. 
And in order to do that, under our move function, we include the following line self.imagerect.x, self.imagerect.y is equal to our self.pos0 minus self.width divided by 2. Self.pos1 minus our self.height divided by 2. Okay, that's our move function. So we've created our move function, but it's now it's not being updated anywhere. We need it to be updated on the cycle of the main game loop. So in my main game loop, I'm going to go down here and above my event handling. I'm going to create a little section for update game object movements. And right over there, I'm going to call my player.move function. Okay. If I hit play, my object should, okay, firstly you see the, the, the white square, the rectangle, is now encompassing my image. It's now also perfectly centered in the middle of the screen. Uh, there's no updates to my, my spaceship at the moment, but we haven't broken anything either. And the reason for that is we haven't included event handlers for um, hitting the arrow keys or, you know, we haven't put in any event handlers for input keys. Let's go ahead and do that now. So here underneath my event handling loop for changing for quit and escape key, uh, I'm going to create a new section. I'm going to call it handling input. Um, and the reason why I'm not including it under this uh, event type handling, uh, in the reason why I'm not putting it in underneath the event.type, event.key, is this one handles it per keystroke. So every single time I hit the key down button, it would advance my character one pixel. Or, you know, it would be like one iteration, and that doesn't help. What I need is for it to be a continuous, if I push in the up button, it needs to continuously move, uh, accelerate my spaceship. In order for it to do that here, under my handling input, we create a little variable called keys pressed. And what we do is we go to pygame.key.get pressed. All right, and then if keys pressed. Pygame.left. Or keys pressed pygame dot key a. So if I let hit the left, if I push in the left arrow key, or if I push the A button, I should be player dot rotation. I should be rotating the character to the left, which is minus one. Remember your x and y coordinates in pygame. X starts with zero on the left to your 1280 on the right. So if we're going to the left, we need to go in a negative direction. And if we're going to the right, we need to go in a positive direction. And I want to say L if keys pressed is equal to pygame dot k right or keys pressed pygame dot k uh, d. Then my player dot rotation should be going to the right. Right, and the last event handler I want to input is if I'm going to say if not LF because I want to be able to accelerate at the same time as I'm pushing left or right. If I use the LF button, then if I, I can only push one button at a time. So if keys pressed pygame dot k up or keys press.
pressed pygay.kw. Then we want to call the player.accelerate method. All right, so now we've put in the handling input for our spaceship. Um, we've created our move functions, we've created our rotation functions, and we've created the accelerate function. If we go and play this, we should now have a moving spaceship. So if I hit to the left, my spaceship rotates to the left. If I hit right, my spaceship rotates to the right. You'll notice that the rectangle does not rotate. Um, I've not created it so that the rectangles rotate, but there will be a permanent hitbox around the spaceship of that shape square. Just bear that in mind. If I then hit my accelerate button, we should start moving forwards. And there we go. I can still rotate. Oh, so now I've run off the screen. Let's come back. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, well, it seems that we can go diagonally. Uh, I don't want to hold in the accelerate button too much because we've not set in a limiter for our acceleration. Um, so we can, oh, now I've run off screen again. Oh dear. Well, going off screen is a bit of a problem, so let's let's go ahead and uh, fix that issue just quickly while we're still busy with the player class. Um, it's a very uh, quick fix. We can go ahead and correct it rather simply. So we go here into our player class, and uh, I'm going to put it here underneath my rotation method. I'm going to go ahead and call it diff wrap to screen. Right, and my little comment is going to be uh, wrap wraps the player to the screen. Basically, what it means is if I go out from the left hand side, my character should appear on the right end of the screen. If I go out the top, I should appear at the bottom. In order for this to work, we're going to go with self.x. And myself dot y will be equal to my position because uh, I've, I've included an argument here for position. Right, so that's what my position is. Then myself dot image rect dot x, self dot image rect dot y. No, no, no. Oh, no where am I going now? So once I've got myself dot x position, myself dot y, I need to actually return my new position, the opposite side of the screen. So that'd be self dot vector two, self dot x, modulus screen width, self dot y, modulus screen height. Right, now we're not calling this method anywhere, we need to actually call this method in our move function. So if we go down to our move function over here, where we're changing our position constantly, we're there we need to actually call our self dot wrap to screen. And that's going to be with our self dot pause plus our self dot velocity. So that will be our new position. And we just need to take that out because it's not going to work. All right. So now we're doing is we're adding our, our current self position plus our self velocity. So our self velocity is our new, is, is, is. So if our current position is x, y, 10, 10, and our velocity is 1, 1, right? Then our new position would then be 11, 11. Okay. So that's what this is. So this is our 10, 10 plus 1, 1, which makes it 11, 11. This then gets fed to our rapture screen in position. So now I have 11 there and 11 there. Okay, so now if my 11 modulus my screen width, if it leaves me with a 0 or a 1, it then moves to the opposite side of the screen. So let's go ahead and try this out quickly. If I run my spaceship up to the top of the screen, I should appear at the bottom. There we go. If I go out this way, I should appear on the left. There I am. 
Then if I go back this way, I should appear on the right. There we go. And if I go on the bottom, I appear at the top. If I go out the corner, did I get this right? I come out the bottom corner. Fantastic news. We are sorted. Well, that's good news that that's working. Yeah, this is fun. Let's see how fast the spaceship can go. Oh, we're losing. Let's try and go straight. Okay, we're going to go faster, 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 faster. Wow. Well, this wouldn't be a problem in the game because you would have crashed into an asteroid by now. So I don't think there's any need to put in a speed limiter. Um, the other issue I've had is if I've tried to inc include a speed limiter in the past, and then what eventually happens is, is you limit the speed on your X, you limit the speed on your Y, you eventually end up at a point where it'll go up like this and then it'll turn to the right. And ultimately, once you've included your speed limiters, it just goes at a 45 degree angle. The diagonal it just normalizes to a 45 degree angle and that's not exactly something I wanted because um, it does a kind of affect your movement which makes it really very weird yeah we've now created our player class she is working we are happy the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is create our, uh, our bullets I think we should create our bullets now once we create our bullets we're going to need to actually uh, create a list to accept all of those bullets that get created and once we have a list of all the bullets that are created we'll be able to deal with each of those bullets um, in a for loop if I can put it that way so let's go ahead and first let's go ahead and create the bullet class I think that's fairly simple enough to do and quick and easy and we can get it done quickly class bullet okay we're not doing any sort of inheritance or anything like that we're just creating a straightforward little bullet so we're gonna go with our dunder method dunder init self uh, we are gonna pass it the cohorts of the player character when we fire the bullet that's gonna need we're going to need to know the starting point of the bullet and then we're also going to need to know the direction that that bullet should be traveling in and that we will also get from the player character which is fantastic all right so the first thing we're going to do is create the size of the bullet i think the self.width equals four but uh, self.height equals four um, so it's like a little square it worked out quite nicely it's a decent size uh, bullet and yeah so the next we need is next attribute we need the position of the bullet which will be our vector 2 and then a coords position 0 and coords position 1 next we need is our self dot direction which will be equal to uh, vector vector 2 direction 0 direction 1 okay our velocity will be self dot velocity vector 2 okay and our self dot speed we're going to be running at 10 all right this is a quick and easy one the next thing we're going to pull in is uh, we're going to do the draw method. We're going to have three methods in this class. We're going to have a draw method, a move method, and then we'll also need a method to check if the bullets have left the screen. That one we can do last. Uh, let's do the move method first. Uh, no, let's do the draw method first. Draw. We need the window argument. Okay. So, we can go to the draw, draws the bullet to the screen. Okay, we're going to draw the bullet to the screen. Straightforward, we're just drawing a little rectangle. So, we're going to pi gain dot draw dot rect. Right, we draw it onto the window. It's going to be a white bullet. Um, 
is going to be a self dot pose, which is my x position, my y position, my width of the square, and my height of the square. All right, so there we go. That's drawing a rectangle to the screen. The next thing we do is once we've created that draw of the rectangle, we actually need to create a rect image, uh, a, rect, a rectangle around that square, because we use that rectangle for collision detection. So when Pygame, Pygame makes use of, you get the image, and then you create a rectangle around that image. And you can do a lot of things with that rectangle. You use that rectangle for collision detection. Um, so we also need to make sure that we create that in the draw method. So our self dot bullet rect is equal to pygame dot rect dot rect big letter. And it's going to be an integer self dot pose. So go ahead and go. Uh, int self dot pose. The reason for it being an in converted to an integer is because there might be fractions because of the diagonal angles that the bullets can travel. And there could be floating points inside there. And uh, the X and Y doesn't work really in floating points. It's self dot width, self dot height. I don't know exactly why I was running into issues with this. I just found that if I converted those to integers, I didn't have any issues anymore. So we're running with that. Okay, so now we've created the draw method for the bullet. Um, I need to go up to my game windows handling for drawing the bullets to the screen. Um, once I create the bullet, I have to add the bullets to a bullet list. All right, let me go ahead and create that bullet list first. So go down to my game object list. Uh, let's call it player bullets is equal to an empty list. All right. Okay. I've got my bullet class. I've got the draw method. Let's just go ahead and create the move method while we're here. Draw diff move. Diff move. We don't need any arguments for that. Uh, the move method is updating the position of the bullet. That's pretty much actually very straightforward. It just goes with self dot pauses plus equals self dot direction multiplied by self dot speed. So if my direction is one one, which would be down and to the right times 10. So I'd be going down, down 10, right 10, down 10, right 10 at the same time, all the time. So that's my self dot move, self dot uh, draw. So two things I need to do now is I need to actually handle the movement of the bullet and I need to call the bullet. Okay, firstly, we need to actually call the bullet. So let's call the bullet. And in order to call the bullets, um, go down to my main game loop, my event handling, and uh, so here, I could include the space bar here. If I, if, if, okay, we use the space bar to shoot. If we put in the, sp uh, the, the space bar here, under this handling input section, I could just hold in the space bar and spam bullets like there's no tomorrow. But remember earlier I spoke to you, I said, if we include it under this event handler, each key down is what counts as a press. And then you have to release the key and push it again, release the key, push it again, in order for it to accept any um, input. So we want to go back to this one, and we want to continue with that. We want to go if event.key is equal to pargame.spacebar, space. We then want to call a bullet, and we want to add it to my bullet list. So we want to go player bullets dot append we're going to call a bullet and if you remember we created two uh, two arguments for creating a bullet class it's the coordinates and the direction 
The coordinates are exactly where my spaceship is, so we want to call it from the player dot pos. And then my direction is going to be my player dot direction. So whichever the direction is that my player is facing, that's the direction the bullet needs to travel in. So if I go into the game, I, I, I'm not calling the draw method in there, so we still won't see the bullets. Hey, doesn't really help much anyway, do we? Okay, so we've got the player bullets. We've added the bullets, the player bullet, the, we've added the bullet to the player bullet game list. All right, so here under updating game object movements, we still need to go in and move those bullets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to be under this little section, and I'm going to go for index, for index, and then bullet in player bullets. Uh, we need to use the enumerate function. All right. For bullet in enumerate, okay. So what we want to do is we want to call the bullet dot move function. So for each bullet that gets added to the player bullets list, it's going to go cycle through that player bullets list and it's going to make call the bullet dot move function method on each one of those inside there. All right, I'm just going to add a comment here for myself. Cycle through the each of the bullet objects. Call the So now we've just dealt with the movement of the bullet, but we still are not drawing the bullet to the screen, and we're not going to see anything. So let's go up here to our game window updating. Under game window updating, we are going to add a for loop over here. So we've got for bullet in player bullets. Bullet and player bullets, we're just going to go with bullet dot draw. Okay, the argument we need to pass is surface, which is the game screen. Cool. Let's just add a small little comment there. It's going to say drawing the bullets to the screen. All right, so let's give this a run now. What we should be seeing is my spaceship. I can move around. Days, but if I'm, this is the moment of truth. If we hit the space bar, <gasps> there's a bullet, 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 let me show it to you rather than try and describe it because describing it's not always the easiest thing to do. So we have the player bullets. I'm going to go ahead and call. I'm going to print our bullet list. Print player bullets list. If we move this out the way a little bit, you'll see how there's a list that's being printed constantly. It's an empty list. If I fire a bullet, there's now a bullet object in my list. And even though my bullet is off the screen, that bullet still exists in my list. That object is now traveling for miles and miles and miles. And if I keep firing bullets, now my list gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's a problem. Because eventually we're going to have so many bullets for the amount of times we have to shoot asteroids and missing that... It's just going to slow the game down. So we need to include a method in our bullet function. Or we need to include a function or a method that checks for the position of the bullet. And if it's off the screen, the bullet needs to be removed. I went ahead and created that bullet function uh, as a method of the bullet function, of the bullet class. Um, there's other ways to do it. Uh, I just felt like doing it this way. I went under def check if off screen. All right, and it's really straightforward. Let's just add a little comment here. 
checks to see if the object is off the screen. All right. And all it does is we're going to go with if self.pos position x is less than zero or if self.pos x is greater than the screen width or self.pos y is less than zero or self.pos y is greater than screen height. So if the position x is less than zero, or if position x is, less, is greater than the screen width, or if position y is less than zero, or if position y is greater than the screen height, we're just going to say return true because it checks to see if it's off screen. So if it is off screen, it returns true. All right. Where did I call this? That makes sense. Over here under my move, under my play, my bullets, my move, my for loop for my bullets movements. Over there, I went and added a little section. I went to say check to see if the bullet object is off screen. Okay. So I said if bullet dot check if off screen yes I just realized now that uh, that by making use of that that's just a it's just a, a thing that Python programmer uses that's supposed to indicate that it's a, a hidden method and it shouldn't be shown publicly or it should only be used within the method within the class itself and not out in the open like this yeah, I'm just going to change that to there, and just change that. That can still be a method, but it's not indicating anything. I'm just using it there. Check if the bullet is off the screen. If bullet dot check is off screen. So if it returns as true, Do we want to break the circle? No, we don't want to break the circle. So we go here and we play. Alright, we're still printing the play bullets list. We shoot there. Back to zero. Back to zero. Do, 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 do. See all the objects and then the object is removed. That works. And the bullets are being removed from the game. So that's fantastic. We can get out to the bunny and we can stop printing that player bullets list. And there we are. We now have a bullets class. We now have bullets. We have, we are shooting. We have a ship. One thing we didn't check is if we move the ship, where do the bullets shoot from? Okay, as you can see, the bullets are being fired from the middle, which is actually okay, it's not too bad. Uh, it does become a bit of an issue if we're rotating the ship because the bullets are being fired out of the center of the ship. I'm going to live with that. Let's move. What happens if we move? Oh, no, oh, it's working fine. She's working fine. Uh, the way we have it set up also does mean that we can actually move faster than our bullets. But uh, then we're going to crash. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Fantastic. 
We've created the bullets class, we've created the race spaceship class. Um, we're moving along quite well here, actually. Oh, my shoulder is my neck. Right, where are we now? So we've got the bullets, we've got the spaceship. Uh, I think the next thing we need to go ahead and add is our asteroid. Doof, 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 doof. Adding the asteroid. All right, adding the asteroids class. Okay, so I went a little bit and I made it a little bit more complicated. Um, I wasn't happy with just adding a simple image for the asteroid and then just rotating that image as it moved across the screen. Um, I found a wonderful little image pack on uh, gameart.org of a bunch of asteroids and like 16 images for their rotation. So the, each image of, the, of each type of asteroid actually rotates uh, if you animate it. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. And the pack also had three different sizes. So it had the large size, it had the medium size, and it had the small size. Um, so in order to go ahead and do this, we're going to add quite a few functions. The asteroid class, we're also gonna to touch on inheriting, on inheritance, because I wanna basically use most of the fun methods coming from the player character. Um, as well as we have to load all of the images into the, the, the game memory. All right, let's tackle this section, starting with, uh, let's load the images in. All right. So loading in of the images, loading of the images. So we go over here. Okay, I went ahead and called the images Asteroid image A is equal to its dictionary I went with, um, and you've got large, you've got uh, medium, which is a list as well, and then you've got small, which is another list. Okay. Go ahead and copy that line. Which ones? B, C, D, E, F, G. B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, so we've got our asteroid images dictionaries. All right. Then we're going to create a utility function in order to handle loading all of these images in one shot. So in order to do that, we're going to go up to our game image load. And we're going to create a function called uh, asteroid image loading. It's pretty straightforward. Utility function for loading all of the asteroid images and converting sizes where necessary. Cool. Yeah, uh, no, you see now, I'm reading the wrong thing. For loading all of the asteroid images. Actually, I've got a utility function for mass loading the various asteroid images. Okay, this was a fairly large function, but it, it did the job quite well, I think. So you've got three variables. You've got large, which is equal to 200 size. You've got medium, which is equal to 125. And then you've got small, which is equal to the 75, if I have it right. Okay, that was my three image size, my three sizes for my, for my asteroids. We're going to go for image size and large, medium, 
small. If image size is equal to large, image sprite size will then be equal to large. And if image size is equal to equal to medium image sprite size is equal to medium else image sprite size is equal to small okay and then while we're continuing in this for loop while we're doing the larges we're going to go with for item in OS dot list directory and then the path is going to be assets asteroids the path is going to be assets asteroids and then this wonderful little thing for Python 3.9 strings image size so for item in, uh, in image size so in large if str string item two. so we're only looking at the first two letters a1 first two letters of that folder that's all okay we're only looking at the first two letters if those first two letters is equal to a1 and we're going to load another asteroid image a and then image size in my dictionary which one large medium or small dot depends on because it's a list game image load Assets, asteroids, image size, and then also uh, item. And then the scale is going to be uh, image sprite size, image sprite size. Okay, so what it's going to do now is it's going to, for image size in large, so it's going to cycle through large, medium, small, so the first cycle will be large. If it's large, my image sprite size will be large, which is 200. Okay, then knowing that, it's going to go down and go, okay, for each item in my OS.list directory, so in my assets, asteroids, and then image size, which we already said is large, in my large folder, going to cycle through there and it's going to check if the first two letters of each file if it corresponds with a1 it's going to add them to the asteroid image a dictionary under the large um, list large key which is a list and it's going to append that image to that list at the large large size okay it's a mouthful I know sorry Try to make it better, but this is the best way to get all of those images in. We just go here, we're going to say Aleph, and we just need to change that to A1, and it has to be A3, which is the start of the second folder, and that's a B. Okay, let's just go ahead and copy this all down while we are busy. So it's B, C, D, E, F. B, C, D, E, F, and G is my seven dictionaries, A3, and then it needs to be B1, and we're checking to see if it's B3, and then we're checking to see if it's C1, and then we check if it's C3, 
I mean, where's the last one? For some reason, it's C4. So we have A1, A3, B1, B3, C1, C3, and then C4. One of my smalls. C4. C4. And the medium. C4. Alright. Cancel. And that's the function to load all of those images into memory. Just like that. So if we go down, we need to call that function. So down here under my program loading, once of functions, game objects. Here I'm going to say asteroid image loading. So all of those images get loaded into memory. Alright, so we've just dealt with loading of the images into memory. So every image is going to end up lying under asteroid image A, asteroid image B. Under large, under medium, and under small. Great. We've dealt with that section. So now we have the images in memory. Let's go create the asteroid itself. Okay, so this is going to be a fairly large class. I'm just going to make this class a bit smaller. So the class for the bullet, I'm going to minimize. The class for the player, I'm going to minimize. Uh, the game window updating, I'm going to minimize for now. I'm going to put that space there. Um, just add a space there. Add a space there. Space there, space there. Okay. Uh, back to my classes. Class asteroid, and we're going to inherit from player. Okay, I'm going to create a Dunder method. I'm going to override Dunder method. The size chords. I'm going to create with a Default value of zero zero, and then image set going to equal to going to equal none. Uh, just realized something. My starting position is a bit weird. Let's carry on. No, put that back there. Okay. So we're going to call the super dot do, 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 do. inheritance. We're going to call it override the dunder methods. Okay. Self dot size is equal to size. Self dot x. Self dot y is equal to generate random location function which we don't have at the moment we're going to go up to utilities and create if self dot size is equal to large else use co ords yeah as well, I think there's a slight flaw in my code but uh, let's keep going I need to create a generate random location at the top here under my asteroid image loading. Diff generate random location. Generate the random location of asteroids a certain distance away from the player character. Okay. For the player 
cos x player cos y is equal to player dot cos. Okay. And then we're going to do a valid location check. Equal to false while not valid location. Asteroid cos x is equal to random dot rand range zero screen width asteroid cos y equal to random dot rand range zero screen height asteroid location is therefore equal to vec vector two asteroid cos x asteroid cos y if asteroid location dot distance to player dot pos is greater than or equal to 100 valid location is equal to true else continue try again and then break out of that loop return asteroid location So that's how generate random location. So basically creating selecting a random range of coordinates by X and Y position of the asteroid, checking to see if it's within 100 pixels of the player character, and if it is, uh, reselect, re-randomly choose coordinates. If it is a valid location, it breaks out of the while loop and it returns that coordinates for the asteroid to be created. Okay, so back down, go to our back, our asteroid class. Yeah, cool. So now we're going to go with self dot image set is equal to self dot generate random image set. If not image set else image set okay so here's a little method an internal method that we created for this class diff generate random image set self dot size is equal to large image set is equal to random dot choice asteroid image a asteroid image b asteroid image c asteroid image D, asteroid image E, asteroid image F, asteroid image G. Just a little mistake here. There we go. Okay. And then return image set. What we're doing is we are now taking our image set of our asteroid. So the image set, remember, is our dictionaries of lists of large, medium, small. So we are now setting our image. Which one? It's going to be dictionary A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. Um, so we're randomly selecting one. If we don't have an image set already created. So in other words, we have the large asteroid. If we shoot that asteroid, it's going to create two smaller asteroids. We want to keep the image set 
in the same family as that large overset. So basically, we don't want a gray asteroid to be shot and broken into two pieces, and then the two pieces are randomly brown asteroids. No, we want them to also be of the gray type. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go with our self.image index is equal to zero. And our self.image is equal to self.image set self.size our dictionary and then our list self.image index which we've set to zero. So basically our image for this asteroid is gonna be so the self.image set it'll be asteroid image A. Self dot size will be large, it'll be the first section, first list, and then self dot image index will be zero, which will be the very first image, which would end up being that one. Yeah. That's all that we've done there. The next thing we do is we go and we say, okay, our self dot width is equal to self dot image dot get width. Self dot Height is equal to self dot image dot get height. Um, and we're going to divide those by two, divide those by two. Self dot image rect dot x is equal to self dot x minus self dot width divided by two. No, not, no, it's minus. Self dot image rect dot y is equal to self dot y minus self dot height floor two. Self dot image rect is equal to pi game dot rect dot rect self dot image rect dot x self dot image rect dot y self dot width self dot height okay and we've created the rectangle for the image that we have next we do self dot direction of the asteroid it's going to be equal to vector 2 random dot rand range minus minus 100 or 100 and divide that by 100 and then for the y is random dot rand range minus 100 100 divided by 100 self dot Speed is equal to random dot rand range three and six. So each, each asteroid created will be moving along at random speeds. And then the self dot image ind is equal to zero. Self dot animate speed. So we put it at is equal to random dot rand range range three seven so what that is is the speed of which the asteroid the rotation the the the, the animation speed either three or seven you'll see as soon as we start drawing these images to the screens uh, remember i said we're not rotating images we are moving through an animation list basically cycling through 60 images of each asteroid and the next we have the self dot health is equal to three if self dot size is equal to large else two if self dot size is equal to medium else one. 
So the health of, so basically, the large asteroid will have a health of three, so you have to shoot it three times. The medium-sized asteroid will have a health of two, which means you have to shoot it two times. Or the smallest, which will have a health of one, which means you only have to shoot it one time. And then self.score, this could have been done later, but I'd rather just do it now. If self.size is equal to large, else 20, no, 20. If self.size is equal to medium, else 50. So this last attribute we've done now is we're getting a score per asteroid. Like I said, these could have been done later. I'll just do it now. So you've got your health for the asteroid and you've got your score for the asteroids. This will be an effect later on, but it's per each asteroid, per each, per each object. You'll be able to uh, get the information of what the score is and the health is when you shoot the asteroids themselves. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to create the accelerate, move, and draw functions methods for the asteroids. So def accelerate. Okay. Increases the speed of the asteroid object. Okay, well we don't really want the speed to increase. We just want to increase the position. So self dot velocity will be equal to self dot direction multiplied by self dot speed. So self dire direction is already a random, random um, chosen randomly, and then the self dot speed is also chosen randomly. So my self dot velocity will be equal to my self dot direction times my self dot speed. The next method I'll create is my move method. Move. Okay. So in my move method, we've already got a move method. Remember, we're inheriting from my player class. So when we inherit from a player class, we're already collecting all of these, all these methods are already in there. So we already have a draw method, we already have a move method, wrap to screen and things like that. So I want to make use of my player move method. I'll do that by saying super dot move. But I also want to include my self dot accelerate method here. The reason for that is for the player character, the accelerate method is actually used in the bottom here, there. Whenever we push the button, then we accelerate the speed of the, the player character. But for the asteroids, they need to be moving constantly. And in order for that to happen, I need to include the accelerate function method underneath my move method. The last method I'm going to add, I'm going to add it here in the middle, is my def. And that's my animate image method. Right. So I'm just going to include the note here. Animates the asteroid object at random animation speeds. Animates the asteroid object at random animation speeds. So self.image plus equals one my image index if self dot image in module self dot animate speed is equal to zero self dot image index is equal to self dot image in index Lord self dot animate speed. Okay. If self dot image index self dot image index is equal to len self dot image set.
itself dot size minus one self dot image is equal to zero self dot image index is equal to zero the resets my animation back to zero self dot image is equal to self dot image set self dot size self dot image index So whole, what this whole function does basically it cycles through my images, through my large images. Um, there's 16 images there in total, zero to 15. It'll cycle through with each cycle, it'll add plus one to my image index. So it'll go from that one, then it'll go to that one, then to that one, then to that one. And as soon as it gets to the bottom here, once it hits there, it recycles back to zero. It starts all over again. Um, so this little section of my method controls the speed of the animation. So it doesn't cycle through um, with every loop of my main, every run through of cycle of my main loop. What it does is it'll go through, it says my self image index, IMD, with plus one, modulus with myself, my animation speed. My animation speed, you remember, was between three and seven, I think it was. Yeah, three and seven. So if, say, it randomly selects five. So if, once it hits five, so my salt of image index hits five, modulus five. If it's equal to zero, then my salt of image index will be equal to my salt of five divided by five, which will equal to zero. And then if once it hits to 10, 10 divided by five will equal to two, then I'll have my next frame. And then it'll be 15 divided by five will equal three is my next frame. And it'll hit 25, and then my next frame will be number five. Then it will hit 50, and my next frame will be number 10. Then it will hit 75, and my next frame will be 15. And then I cycle it back to zero. Okay? So that's how I control the animation speed. Okay, so that about does it for the creation of my asteroid class. What we need to do now is go up to our utilities. And generate asteroids is number one. So mm, we need to create those asteroids. And I need to go to my st stage. All right. So under my global, my, under my game settings, my game variables. Game settings variables. Under game settings variable, where are we now? Game settings variables. There. I'm going to add a new variable called stage equals zero. Okay. Then we're going to go up to the my utilities, my utility functions. And I'm going to create a function. I'm going to create two functions here. I'm going to create two functions. Under my generate random location. The first function I'm going to create is Da, 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 da. Def check asteroid count increase stage, and the comment for this will be checks the number of asteroids currently on the screen, then increases the stage level if no asteroids. Okay. So I'm going to define a global variable and that's my stage if then asteroid 
objects is equal to zero and not game okay, is equal to zero. Stage plus equals one. So my asteroid objects, I haven't created the objects list yet. So over here I'm gonna go asteroid objects is equal to an empty list. Asteroid objects is equal to an empty list. Okay, then under my check asteroid increase stage, I'm going to create a function generate asteroids. And this one is generates asteroids per the stage level. So if stage level is zero, then we're gonna know zero is at stage level is one, we're gonna have one asteroid if it's two, it's two asteroids if it's three, it's three asteroids. Alright, before in range stage asteroid objects dot append asteroid and the argument we're going to pass is large okay that generates my asteroids of course i still need to call those two functions stage plus equals one and over here generate asteroids okay now I need to call this function here this one right here I still need to call okay I think that takes place in my main game loop do 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 So at the start of my main game loop, I do a check. Check asteroid count increase stage. And if I have it right, my stage, my first stage, stage level should be zero. Zero. So what'll happen is when the game starts, it'll run through, it'll check my asteroid increase count check my asteroid count, obviously my asteroid count will be zero, my stage number will be zero, it will go here, it will say if asteroid is equal to zero, then it will increase my stage level to one, and then it will generate asteroids according to the number of asteroids, according to my stage level, so if my stage level equals one, this function runs, calls this function, and it says okay cool, Stage is one, number of asteroids to append to the list is one. Okay, that's how that one works. I wonder if we run this now, what will happen? Uh, it's loading all the images, but nothing's to the screen because we're not calling the draw functions, we're not calling the move functions. So let's call the draw functions first because we're at the top here by the game window updating. Okay, so under game window updating, we're gonna go with um, for bullet and bullets. Okay, call asteroid object, then asteroid objects. Right, asteroid object dot draw to the game screen and then we're also going to this is also where we call the method for the animating the images we're going to go asteroid object dot animate image okay righto 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 Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our main game loop. We're going to go down to the main game loop. 
and we're going to create a movement check. Okay, so for ID asteroid object in enumerate asteroid objects. Okay, that's what we want to do. We want to say asteroid object dot move. Now let's see what happens if we run. Do -do 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 -do. There's an asteroid. Let's put a square around it, and it's moving, and it's rotating. Well, it's not rotating. The image is changing. It's animated, and it's moving, and we can move, and it's just flying in a random direction. That's fantastic. We have an asteroid on the screen, boys. Yay! All right. The next step, the next thing we need to tackle now is we need to do collision detection and checking for collisions between the bullets and the asteroids and the asteroids and the player character. Most of that I think we're going to handle in the main game loop itself with one little block of code which is about 30 lines long. It's not too bad. All right. So here we have the... In, while we're in the asteroid object for loop, we're going to go for index and bullet and enumerate player bullets. Okay. If bullet dot bullet wrecked dot collide wrecked asteroid object dot image wrecked. So that we're doing a collision detection between the bullet bullet rectangle and the asteroid rectangle. And if there's a collision Asteroid object dot health minus equals one. Okay, remember we gave each asteroid uh, health of three or two or one depending on its size. So that we deduct. So if, uh, if the bullet connects with the asteroid, the asteroid loses one one health. Right. Next thing we need to do is we need to. Okay, we need to see if I've added score. Let's go ahead and do that now while we're doing this block of code. Let's go and do it now. We need to go to our game settings. Sorry, jumping around here a bit, but if we do it now, it'll save time and we don't have to worry about doing it later and then coming back and doing it. Uh, stage, clock stage, we've got stage, then we've got lives. Which will be player lives, which is three, a game over state, which is equal to false, and a score, which is equal to zero, and top score, which is equal to well, nothing at the moment. So we'll just call it none. Alright, now we've got the score. So let's go back down to the body. Remember in our asteroid class we also had score that was created. Uh, let's open the asteroid class self.score. There we go, see? So since we've already got that there, we've got the functionality, we might as well go ahead and include it while we're doing our collision detections. So score, then be plus equals asteroid object dot score. Yeah. Then, if the asteroid object dot health is equal to zero, which means that it's dead. And if the asteroid object dot size is equal to large, if it was the large size, it needs to split into two medium sized asteroids, then the asteroid objects dot append, uh, we're going to create an asteroid. Going to be a medium size now, 
and we're going to create it. It needs to be created at that particular asteroid object dot pause and that asteroid object dot image set. And because we want it to be two. All right. Then we can take this whole block here and we paste it just right below it. And we say LF at her object of size was actually medium. Then it's going to create two smaller ones. Two small asteroids, right? Else, it was already a small asteroid. cells it was already a small asteroid so if the asteroid dot health is equal to zero if it's large then it creates two smaller ones if it's medium it creates two me two mediums if it's medium it creates two small ones so if it's not large if it's not medium then it just goes ahead and deletes asteroid object objects index okay and you can also go ahead and delete player bullets index. So it also deletes that player bullet, deletes the bullet from the list, and you can break out the cycle then, break out the for loop. So that's now clearing detection between the asteroid and the bullets. Let's go ahead and test that quickly. So there's the asteroid, if we shoot a bullet, it's one, two, three. Two. So, it's fast. That one was very fast. Seems to be working. Look at that. Oh, there's two asteroids now. Oh, my goodness. Where are we? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, now obviously we're not doing any clearing detection between the spaceship and the asteroids, but we'll get there. As you can see, we're getting various types of asteroids, various different colors. It's all working quite well. Fantastic. Okay, the next slide. Well, the next check we need to do with the asteroids while we're going through the asteroids themselves is we will do a check against the player characters. So if asteroid object dot image rect dot collide rect with the player dot image rect. Firstly, so if the asteroid collides with the player, well, it's not a non capital R. It's not a capital R. So if the player collides with the asteroid, or if the asteroid collides with the player, we're going to lose a life. And then if lives is less than or equal to zero, just to be safe, for whatever reason it goes below zero, so we're going to say, Game over is equal to true. Okay. Equal to true. Basically, the score will then be equal to zero. Else, reset after losing a life functions we need to go create that function we're going to delete the asteroid objects in the ID and break break and break okay so we need to create the reset after losing a life 
returning the function. Reset after losing a lap. Utility. Reset. Reset after losing a lap. Reset after losing a lap. And then generate asteroids. Reset after losing a life. Okay. And the versus reset set the player character to the middle of the screen. Move the asteroids to new locations. Okay. And then clear the screen of bullets. Fantastic. So the first thing we need to do is we need a player dot pose is equal to screen width divided by two, screen height divided by two, floor by two. And player dot direction will be equal to vector vector two zero minus one to the place north. Player dot velocity will be equal to vector two. And uh, player dot no player bullets list dot clear. If not game over, so if the game's not if it's not game over, okay. Let's just deal with this game over function quickly because we've got it inside here. We need to actually go through with it. So under my game settings variables, game settings variables, game settings variables, which is over here, we've included our game over. Okay. Game over is currently set to false, but then if we hit and lose all three lives, our game over then becomes true. If game over, if so, that means under this function, if not game over, then that means for index asteroid objects, object in enumerate asteroid objects right asteroid object dot pose will be equal to generate random location and then we want it to wait sometimes we'll do pi game dot time dot wait after five seconds else asteroid objects dot clear so if it is game over you just clear the list of asteroids okay that's the reset after losing a life function reset after losing a life function in my game window updating we're going to also handle the game over variable. So if not game over, okay, then you want these four loops to run and the player that draw. You want all of that to be drawn to the screen. All right. And then, so that's the first section of the game, hand, game over handling. In my main game loop, we're also going to handle the if not game over section. Over here, we're going to include if not game over. So if, if game over is still set to false, then we want all of this to actually take place. So we just have to shift it over one block. Oh, my shoulders. 
So that's basically all of my object movement and collision detection must all occur if the game is still set to not, not game over. Okay, have we broken anything? Let's run it. Let's see where we are. Sure, look at that one go. Oh. That was weird. Oh, of course it has health. <laughs> I forgot that it had health. That's silly me. And there's the collision. Game freezes for five seconds. And we reset the positions. And we're on the go again. And we shoot rocks, we shoot the asteroids, we shoot everything we can. the stage again quickly. I just want to hit this. Let's crash three times. There's life number two gone. Then life number three and everything's taken off the screen. Now we don't know what's happened but that's what we want the screen to be cleared. Okay. That all seems to be working. Next thing we need to do, so we've got game working, we've got the asteroids, we've got the ship moving around, the asteroids, the collision detection is there, the game over there is there. Uh, once we've hit the game over, we want to be able to reset the game. Now, in order to be able to do that, we need to come down here to our event handling loop and over here under event.key we're going to say if game over is equal to true then if event.key is equal to pygame.key tab we're going to go reset after losing a life and stage is going to go back to equal one and lives is going to go back to equal three generate asteroids and game over will be, will be equal to false okay so that's once you hit the game over section of the game okay there's the first laugh second laugh And then the third laugh, everything disappears in its space, nothing happens. But if we hit tab, the game starts all over again. There's our spaceship, there's our asteroid, and everything's working again. There's splits. Right, fantastic, that seems to be working. Now what we need to do is we need to add some text to the screen to let people know what's going on. I think that's one of the last things we need to do. Um, add some text to the screen. We've still got a couple of utility functions to create, which goes alongside the text being added to the screen. So I think we'll start with the text to the screen. Let's go up to our text screen, our utility functions. And right above my game window updating, we've created a text to screen function. And we're going to pass to it the message. Okay. And the comment here will just be text to screen. Right. So font is equal to pygame dot uh, font dot sys font which I'm going to use just straightforward Arial 
and size 30. Okay. Uh, display text. Display text. We're going to be equal to. Oh, what have I done here? What's that? Font. And our display text will just be font.render. And then the message. One. And then the color will be 255, 255, 255, which is white. And then to return. display text okay so there's my utility function for the text in my game window um, draw the player character from the screen under that but not included in the game over thingy we're going to start with player lives is equal to text screen uh, if Player lives do, 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 do. string lives. Okay, what you got that? We're going to blip game screen dot blit play lives. And it's gonna be a twenty-five twenty-five. The next one we're going to do is going to be the stage, which is equal to text screen uh, stage uh, str stage. Do, 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 do. Okay, and then game 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 screen dot blit stage and this is going to be 25 no in brackets 25 x position y position will be 25 plus play lives dot get height plus 10 next we play this now, you'll see on the top left you've got player lives and stage. And if we crash, my stage should go up and my player lives should be two. There we go. Next thing we want to go for is we're going to go with the score, and that's equal to text screen. And that is a string score. Right. And we're going to blit that to this game screen dot blit score screen width minus twenty five minus score dot get width and then this one also be at 25 points okay and the last one is the top score is going to be equal to text screen if top score string top score Okay, and then split that to the screen, game screen dot blit top no, top score. And wait, what's going on there? What else is going on there? Okay, text screen. Okay, top score. And then my X position is going to be screen width minus 25 minus top score dot get width comma 25 plus score dot get 
height plus 10. So we should have a score and a top score on the right. Score, top score, none. Argument, top score, none. What's that all about? Why is the top score none? Top score, top score, top score, top score, top score, top score equal to none. Oh yes, of course, because there's a function, a utility function for that. Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course. But let's carry on with this window updating. So we've included the, there's the four text screens. The next thing I want to add is I'm going to add a an asteroids bar in the middle of the those two screens. Okay. So asteroids rectangle width is equal to screen width screen width minus 100 minus score dot get width minus play lives dot get width okay that's going to be the width of my asteroids rectangle, which is going to appear up in the top middle of the screen. Right, so that's, I've just included that there as a variable because it's a very long thing to include inside my pygame.draw.rect. So I'm going to go pygame.draw.rect game screen. I'm going to draw to the screen. What's going on there? pygame.draw.rect Okay, uh, it's going to be a red bar, 255 by 0 by 0. And we're going to, the X position is going to be uh, at 25 plus play lives dot get width. Plus 25. The Y position is going to be at 25. Then the rectangle length width is going to be my asteroid, asteroids, asteroids rectangle width, which I calculated in the variable above. And then my height is going to be play lives dot get height okay so if I run this there should be a, rect a red rectangle to the screen and there it is there's my red rectangle okay so I want to draw a green rectangle on top of the red rectangle which will then show me almost like a health bar how many asteroids are left for each stage okay so the, in order to do that this is where i'm going to come up with a few more utility functions the first one i'm going to have is num asteroids will be equal to calculate total num asteroids so the first thing to do is we're going to calculate the total number of asteroids here the calculate total num asteroids all right and this function will calculate the total number of asteroids on the stage so num asteroids is equal to zero for asteroid object in asteroid objects list if asteroid object dot size is equal to large 
right? If it's large, it means that there's seven, because you've got one large, then you shoot it, it breaks into two small ones. So that's plus two. Then it breaks into two small, four, two, each one of those two breaks into another two, so that's another four. So that's plus four. It takes you up to seven. The num asteroids plus equals seven. Otherwise, Aleph asteroid object dot size is equal to medium. The num asteroids plus equals three. Wait, why three? Oh yes. It's one, it's the main one, and then two small ones. Go. And then else num asteroids plus equals one for each small one. Okay. And then we're just going to return the num asteroids. Straightforward. That one was relatively straightforward. Okay. Now we've got the number of asteroids. The next thing we're going to need is the num asteroid rect. Asteroids rect is equal to the stage number multiplied by seven. So if it's stage one, there's going to be a total of seven asteroids. If it's stage two, there's going to be a total of 14 asteroids. Now we draw the green rectangles. Pi game dot draw dot rect to the game screen. And this one's going to be green. This game screen is going to be green. So it's going to be 0, 2 for 5, 0. Again, we're going to basically draw in the same place as this one, up to there. So the x and y coordinates is the same. Then we're going to say asteroids rectangle width multiplied by my num asteroids divided by my num Asteroids rect. So basically a percentage. Oh, and that's a small letter. No asteroids rect. Okay, and then we're going to get the play lives dot get height. So if I have this right, that should be a green rectangle now on my image. See there's a green rectangle. And if I shoot an asteroid, there we go. So as you can see, <coughs> there's now technically uh, four, three, six asteroids remaining. There's two asteroids remaining, one asteroid remaining, zero. Oh, things seem to be working so well so far. Oh, this is going well. Now there's four asteroids, oh, three asteroids. Collision. Okay, fantastic, 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 fantastic. Uh, the last thing we need to do now, because we, if we hit the game over mark, we still need to just show the player on the screen what's happening. So, if game over, we're going to pull out the game over text, which is equal to text screen. Message is if game over press tab to start again. Game screen dot 
dot split game over text screen width applaud by two minus game over over text dot get width divide by two and then twenty five. Okay, so if we run out into the game over, if we hit game over, one, so we have two lives left. One life left. Game over, press tab to start again. We hit tab. Now we start again. Yay! Seems to be working. That's fantastic. Last thing we need to do, I think, I think the final frontier, the final, final frontier, is we've got two more things to do. Two more things to do. So our game window updating is basically done. Uh, calculate that's done. We need to update and create a folder for a file for our top score, and we need to load some sound files. So that's where we are right now. We need to go to the top by our utility files. To create two more utility functions. Yeah, two more utility functions. Uh, these are quick ones to do. Um, this is the handling with to deal with the top score. So the first function we're going to create is define open top score file file. All right. So with open top no 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 no, no. with open top score file dot text as file top score is equal to int file dot read I think with this one you have to create a top a file, new file, uh, top score file for txt. Okay, that's it there. Go back to your main folder, that must be txt. And then my top score file, I'm just going to add a top score there, 1000. Okay, close that. So I've created a text file, a text file, and in my text file I've just put a score of 1,000, right? So open top score file, open da, 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 top score is equal to int, integer. Da, 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 da. And I want to file dot close, and I'm going to return top score. Okay, that function is actually called on the game setting variable top score. And it'll be open top score file. Top score file. So that's actually my top score there. Right. The next util the last utility function I need to create is diff save top score score file. Straightforward. 
global score. Declaring that as a global because I want to access that and change it if necessary. So if my score is greater than top score, then my top score will become my score. And then with open top score file.txt uh, w as file file dot write as a string top score then file dot close and return okay this function takes place when we hit game over when we hit the game over it does that check so it'll do that check once we hit game over which is Sure, somebody's speeding outside. If loves game over is equal to true. Yeah. Then we're gonna go save top score file. Right. The very last thing we need to do is we need to load in the sound files. So here under my game image, loading assets. We're gonna go right here, I'm gonna go shoot sound is equal to pargame.mixer.sound and then the file is assets sounds laser.wav okay next sound is the explode expel sound which is equal to pargame.mixer.sound Assets, sounds, bang, small, dot, web. The next one, which is uh, ship, expo, sound, is equal to pargame, dot, mixer, dot, sound, assets, sounds, bang, large dot web all right so that's the loading of our three sounds into the game so the shoot sound we want to play the shoot sound whenever we hit the space bar button space shoot sound sound dot play okay whenever the whenever an asteroid gets destroyed so it's called da, 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 asteroid da, da, da. if asteroid dot health is equal to zero whenever asteroid health is equal to zero where am I going now uh, there I can do it there yeah EXPL PL sound dot play and then the last one is the ship explosive players when loves minus one ship exp sound dot play I think that does it I think that's everything I think we've just finished the game, finished the tutorial, finished the, the video, all of the stuff is in, let's hit the play function, oh, we still get rid of the squares, the white squares, but anyway, let's test the game quickly, well, let's get rid of the squares quickly, uh, the squares come from the player class, was under the draw function, that one there, under the player class, under draw function, there's a pygame.draw.rect. Let's just comment it out quickly. Let's hit play again. 
and no more white squares there's my asteroid if i shoot there should be a sound I'm sure that's loud oh and the asteroid explodes that's a nice sound. oh and we crash into the asteroid i just want to lower the sound a little bit so we go to where we loaded the sounds in and over here, I think shoot sound dot set volume. I think we put it at 0 0.5. And the shooting sounds very loud. And it still seems very loud. 0 0.25. If it's at 0 0.25, still seems quite loud. This is 0 0.5, should barely be able to hear it. It's definitely softer. I'm going to put it at 0 0.25 and you can change that as you need. Well, there we go. We, ladies and gentlemen, we've created a uh, Asteroids game. I hope you had fun with this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have more fun playing it. Um, it's a bit of work to get it done, a bit of work to put it together, but it's a fun game and uh, it's fun to play. Great. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hit the like. Give me any comments. Give me any suggestions, things like that. I'd appreciate it. I hope you had fun. Um, cheers for now.